Hello, this is Noreen Crone Findlay from CroneFindlay.com and ToddyTalksCrafts.com. I receive so many requests from people saying, how do you sew woven panels and woven motifs together? And I'm working on a shawl right now that I'm weaving three triangles, three triangles woven on the three foot triangle loom together. Now I've got two of them stitched together and along the edge of each of the uh, three foot um, panels I am sewing five triangles that I wove on the potholder loom. I still have, you can see here's one of the seams along the edges between the um, between two of the triangles and you can see that it's visible but it's not terribly unpleasant. So I'm going to show you how to sew. Now you probably wonder why is there a gap there? That's because I want this is at the neck and I want this to form a collar. Um, I've made a video of the how the uh, three uh, three foot panels uh, triangles come together to make a shawl, and so I will post that uh, that link um, in the um, explanation that's underneath the video on YouTube. So I'm going to show you how I sew the long sections of the triangles together, but I'm also going to show first how to sew the. Uh, the triangles that were woven on the potholder loom to the hypotenuse edge of the triangles. Now, the uh, in order to weave a triangle on the potholder loom, you can go and check out my video uh, showing you how to do that, and I will post the link for that as well. So, I'm going to get the third triangle and start sewing the um, the small triangles along the hypotenuse, or the long edge of that. I want to establish the center of the hypotenuse, the long edge of the triangle, and I want to, so I'm folding it in half. So I'm going to fold one of the small triangles in half, and I will butt that up against the triangle, the big one, and I will take, I have some very pretty little, um, what are those called, binder clips, miniature binder clips, and I'm going to put three of them on to clip that center triangle in place. Next, I'm going to fold the um, at the corner in to meet this corner and just make sure there see how that just fits perfectly and then I will clip the remaining four triangles along the hypotenuse so I'm just going to I, you don't need to see me doing that I'll just uh, turn off the camera and do that I didn't bother putting a binding clip here because I would just be taking it off right away. Now, I've got some little tussocky bits here and those are going to get dealt with right away. I'm going to cut a length of yarn, just a comfortable length. I'm going to, this is, I think, six or seven strands. And I don't feel like I need the full thickness, so I'm going to just work with a few of the strands. I kind of separated that in half. And now what I'm going to do is I'll thread my needle. I fold the yarn over the eye of the needle, pinch, and push the fold up into the needle, and it's threaded. So now what I'll do is I'm going to come in above and come out at the corner in order to just anchor my thread so that I'm going to bury my uh, yarn end inside the piece that I'm stitching 
uh, on the small triangle and let's see no I pulled the whole thing through okay let's try that again okay sometimes this happens all right so take that through again and what I'll be doing now there's two ways of, of dealing with your ends you can weave them in using um, a latch hook or what I'm going to show you how I do it uh, is I flip them up into the gap between the larger triangle and the small triangle and then I will go uh, I'll be stitching under them now this loop needs to be kind of rolled and twisted in just to lock it in place and then pick up the next one and now I'm going to I'm always going to be working uh, coming either going that way or that way and the yarn ends are going to fall into the gap so I'm going to pick up a loop let's come down a bit closer just make some adjustments here in the camera okay good okay so we'll pick up one loop on the small triangle side and then I'm going to go over the yarn ends and pick up a loop on the large triangle bring it through and holding those in place pull them up now I'm going to lift and go under the ends I need to move my hooks out of the way they're catching in the way okay so I'm going to go under the ends and come across my yarn will come under the yarn ends and now I'm going to go over the yarn ends and what happens it and then pick up a loop on the other side and then what happens is that the yarn ends get captured see I'm pulling them down going across picking up a loop on the smaller triangle because those ends I'm going under them and then over them they are just going to vanish in the stitching so they are sewn in and they just go away quite nicely so the shortest ones you may need to do a little trim uh, afterwards but probably not too much and so what you're doing is basically an invisible an invisible seam move that guy out of the way and so as I go across in this direction I'm always going under my yarn ends and I come across this way and I I am going over so under the the threads bring them back over and then I go over so I'm going back and forth locking in my ends now if you prefer uh, you can take the time to weave in all your ends first and then just do this back and forth between the two pieces now I'm sewing together two triangles but this technique that I'm showing you works for absolutely all kinds of uh, joining in weaving when you're sewing you're weaving together so you find the one stitch at the edge and then the complementary one on the other piece and you work your way across I can snip this guy now because it's pretty well anchored in put that aside 
and I'm just going to keep weaving all the way up, weaving all the, uh, stitching all the uh, little triangles to the larger triangle by going from one side to the other. Kind of zigging and zagging across and picking up one stitch on one side. I think it might go under a couple here. And then a matching stitch on the other side. And then every once in a while you can pull up slightly just to lock that in. So there you go. Just I'll lift up a bit and I'm just going to carry on stitching the small triangles to the large triangle going from one side across, picking up another stitch at the other side, back and forth. And so it goes. And I take the clips out as I go. Some people like to use pins. I really like uh, the binder clips because having stabbed myself ever so many times and the Binder clips just feel, A, <laughs> not as pointy, and B, um, they're quite secure. So, I like them. So I use them. And it's interesting because um, right at the time that I, it's kind of like the universe supplies the information like in a million places all at once. Just when I s figured out, oh, I really like using them this way. All of a sudden, all these other people were saying, guess what? I really like using binder clips. And I, I just laughed because Elizabeth Zimmerman used to call it unventing. She unvented something that, you know, she would figure something out at the same time as other people. Which is kind of horrifying when you're writing a book. And the book, you know, the book isn't going to be out for another year and a half. And so you're putting in something that you thought was very neat and new. And then, you know, it's been out on the internet for a year and a half before your book gets picked up, and, uh, gets released, and it's like, wah! Okay, I'm going to turn off the camera and just keep stitching. So, back and forth. I tend to work with both my hands, by the way. You can just do it with one hand if you prefer, but I tend to pass the needle back and forth from my left hand to my right. Okay, I'm going to keep stitching until I've got all five of the little triangles stitched to the hypotenuse of the three foot triangle. So these were woven on the 18 peg six inch potholder loom. This triangle was woven on the three foot uh, triangle loom. Um, and there's a video about the weaving of this entire shawl, but I wanted to do a separate video showing how I do the stitching together, just because there's so many people asking. So, I'm going to keep stitching and get back to you when I finish this, and I'm starting to uh, stitch this triangle to the other two. Okay, I have finished sewing these uh, five small triangles to the, um, the remaining triangle that I'm going to, large triangle that I'm going to be stitching to the other two that are already stitched together. So what I've done is I have used uh, paper clamps, binder clamps, and clamped it together and I measured off the opening that I want for the collar. So this is going to fold down to become the collar. And I marked that with the needle and then placed the top binder clamp there. So I'm going to start sewing in the two panels together. And there are just, there's lots of ways to stitch um, pieces together, but I'm just going to show you a couple of the ways that I use. I showed you the one with 
uh, for the little ones. Uh, and now with uh, the, just make sure I'm in screen here, push this up a bit and then take it down. There we go. Always chasing the camera to make sure I'm doing this right. So I'm going to take the um, the needle in along the edge of one of the small triangles. Oh, I also wanted to mention to you, and you can see that um, here, where's my finger? Oh, up here. Up here. To me this looks a bit gappy. So what I'll do is, I stitched on the other side, so I'll come along and stitch along again on this side and it'll just tighten up those edges and give a really nice finish to the back side of the shawl. Now I have stitched the needle in and I'm going to um, just pull that up to bury the ends. I showed you a way of stitching it in before. Now this one is a buried one. And so now I'm taking a stitch right at the edge and a stitch in place twice and that will lock and anchor these two pieces together. So I can take that clamp off. Now because uh, these two pieces of weaving both came off of the three foot triangular loom. They have um, edge loops of the stitches that are going to line up just beautifully. So I'm going to come, I'll start down here with the first one just to get that first one in. So I come in to the one on the right and now over and into the one on the left pull up right left and so I am just zigzagging my way up the um, up the two panels and it goes really quickly I will have this stitched up in the blinking of an eye. So hand stitching work is um, very efficient and it's it's also um, lovely and contemplative too. I mean there are times when you will want to do some machine stitching uh, for a piece that you've cut to um, anchor the edging but when you have clean finished edges like you get uh, coming off of the triangle looms and off of l many looms, you're just going to find that uh, hand stitching is really a pleasure. And there it's, you can see that, I'm going to go down even lower so you can see that the stitching becomes quite invisible. Well, it's not totally invisible, but it's pretty acceptable. Oops, I need to fix that. There's a little thread loose there. Okay, so I will just continue working my way up to the top binder clamp, and then what I'll do is I will stitch in place several times at that top binder clamp at the edge and that will anchor my um, stitches and close the, off that upper edge here, there, and then I will stitch back down. I need to move back up a bit because I'm talking away and you can't really see. Okay, I'm going to move the table because we've suddenly got a flash of sunshine. It's challenging when you're filming in the winter. We live way far north in Canada. Edmonton, Alberta is very far north and so in the winter it's challenging to photograph and film because the light is very, very... The, the sun rides the horizon for a couple of months and it's very uh, 
challenging to get good light. Okay, so I am just going to keep on stitching here. I only have a few inches left to go and then this seam will be done. So people often think that sewing woven pieces together is very challenging and that's why I made this video is to show you it's really not. It's really quite easy and really quite fun. So I like to make uh, shawls on um, smaller looms and stitch them together so that I don't have to have the um, gigantic seven foot version of the loom set up, taking up huge, huge amounts of space. We downsized into a much smaller house and so that means the seven foot loom can be quite imposing in a smaller space. There I am stitching over in place here to lock and anchor my neck edge and then I'm going to stitch back. I'm going to just weave my end right back in or you know what I can do too? I like to do this as well. Again, turn it over. Just make sure I've caught everything and if it, yeah it looks pretty good on this side too so I'll just weave it in here and my ed my edges are now stitched together so this technique works as well those are my scissors I just sent flying I was going to snip that a second oh grab them um, this technique if you're trying to join um, peg loom weaving you just put the edges together just like I've done here and do the same technique of stitching back and forth and voila the seam is sewn quick and easy happy weaving and enjoy stitching your pieces together